And sometimes when you don't go back where you started and remember what God did where you started, you lose perspective when you get where you're going. Oh man, I, I feel so guilty preaching this point. It's so easy for me to get caught up and consumed in my own convenience, my own drama, my own insecurities, my own dysfunction. And a lot of times, I'll be honest with you, I don't share what God is doing in my life because it doesn't seem big, because I can compare it to something else and it seems small. It seems small like these stones. You know, at one point in your life, you're, you're really grateful for it, but then at some point, it can lose its significance. I was asking somebody the other day if I could hear their testimony. And it's a church word, right? The testimony. People don't really talk like that except in courts and church. You know what I mean? Like it's just a real churchy thing to say. And they were like, well, when I was 12, and they were 53. I was like, not that testimony. You can't fight today's devils if you don't have today's testimony. There needs to be a current work that God is doing in your life. Yes, he saved me, and I want to talk about that, but what is he doing in my life today? Another generation that knew not the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. This is, this is your testimony. You know, It can be a tiny testimony. It doesn't have to be a big rock. You can fight the devil with a little rock. Ask David. You can fight a big giant with a little rock if you know how to throw it. I said you can fight depression with a little rock if you know how to throw it. You can fight discouragement with a little tiny, little tiny testimony. Well, I don't have a big testimony. I did pretty much all my life. I've been serving the Lord. I never, I never was on drugs and women and running around. I pretty much grew up in. That. Come on, man! You don't have to have a meth lab in your garage to have a testimony. You don't have to be fresh off death row to have a testimony. You don't have to have 14 children by 14 women to have a testimony. A testimony, it can be the smallest thing. Like a few weeks ago, I was getting ready to come out and preach. And I want to tell you this because Joshua said, Tell them. Tell them what God did for you. Tell them. Tell them about it. Preach it. Teach it. You overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. There is power in your personal testimony. So a few weeks ago, I was getting ready to preach. I didn't feel like preaching. Ooh. <laughs> I, I love the Lord. I believe his word, and I believe he's coming again. I just didn't feel like preaching on that Saturday night. Weather was nasty. I didn't feel like preaching. So I was having a little pity party. I hate to tell you this, but I was, I was being so childish. And, but then I had this moment. I was like, FaceTime one of your friends and get him to pray for you, because the service was about to start. Um, so the staff was out doing staff stuff, so they couldn't come pray for me. So I was going to FaceTime one of my friends who didn't have a Saturday night service, and he didn't answer. <laughs> Apparently, Judah Smith had better things to do than pray for his friend. <laughs> then I called Craig Groeschel. That's my pastor. That's my guy. And he didn't answer, and he always answers. He didn't answer. And I was running out of time because I needed to get out there and preach. So I said this little pitiful prayer. You know, not the kind I pray in front of people. <laughs> I was like, oh Lord, since nobody wants to pray for me, I'm always praying for everybody else. I guess I'll go out, preach, I'll pray for myself. And I start praying, you know, this real mumbly, grumbly, grumpy prayer, a little bad attitude prayer, a little like kids going to make up the bed. Fine. That kind of prayer. <laughs> Have you ever had that level of faith where it's like, fine, faith. Fine, God. Fine. I'll pray for myself. So I start praying. Father, in the name of Jesus. Out loud, I say that. When I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, the moment I got it out of my mouth, Father, in the name of Jesus, my phone rang. My phone hardly ever rang, rings. 
my phone, I mostly communicate by text. I don't do a lot of talking on the phone. And my phone rings, and it hardly ever rings. It never rings at that time of day. And it said, no caller ID. But I'm not making this up. I said, I should answer this. I said, hello? This deep voice comes on the phone. What are you doing? The voice of none other. It could only be Bishop T.D. Jakes. That's like my favorite preacher since I'm like this big. Since I started wanting to be a preacher, this was my favorite preacher. It, here he is calling me. What are you doing? And I was like, hey, Bishop Jakes, I was just going out to preach from Saturday night service. He said, oh, well, since this is a bad time, let me just pray for you before you go out there and preach real quick. Father, in the name of Jesus, anoint him with your spirit and fill him with your wisdom. Give him words to say from heaven. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm not waiting until something to me i need to fight the devil sometimes with a phone call there are little things that god has done for me moments where i called his name and there was nobody there to answer and then all of a sudden something from heaven with no caller id and god reached out and god dried my tears and god strengthened me and god upheld me with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm You need to tell these stories. You need to tell these stories. Stop telling yourself the story that nobody cares about you and that you're alone and that it doesn't matter. Another generation who didn't know what the Lord had done for Israel because they stopped telling the story. And when you stop preaching the gospel to yourself and reminding yourself that the Son of God accepted and chose you and brought you out of Egypt and brought you out of sin, and brought you through the Red Sea, and brought you through the Jordan, and brought down the Jericho walls, and brought you out of bondage, and brought you out of fear. Please hear me. When you stop telling that story, you lose your strength. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to click the subscribe button on your screen so we can notify you whenever we release new content. Go ahead and subscribe now. I'll see you next time.